morning everyone, we're going to be working in an unusual format this morning. Now I've given you a few options and I'm going to kind of go through a lot of them. If I miss anything out, give me a shout. So to start off with, you can see here I have piles of bits and pieces that I'm going to be using in this workshop. But let's start off with the simple stuff. So the simple stuff is, first of all, having a reference image. Once you've got your reference image, hopefully you've got your paper. You can see here this is 300 GSM watercolour paper for this project. I've taken a HB pencil, standard pencil, and I've constructed a very simplistic drawing. So it's, it's quite, you know, down to the bare roots. A few boundary lines of different colours. A lot of this is going to get obliterated with the, the colour stage. But it's nice to have it down in your head and just clear before you get started. Ensure that you've used a putty rubber to go over and get rid of any lines that you don't want. So for instance, I can see a few here. So I'm just going to use my rubber and make sure that my drawing is nice and crisp. Now my drawing is a little bit darker than yours should be. Purely so that you can see it nice and clearly on the camera and get an idea of what I'm talking about. Try to be a little bit more lighter in your pencil. Do remember that we are going to be looking at using masking fluid. And masking fluid can take off some pencil line. So you can go a little bit darker than you'd naturally go for a watercolour paper. So that leads me on to the next stage. The next stage is using masking fluid. I've got my bottle here. I've also got my tub of washing up liquid. And I've got a brush, obviously, to apply it off. There you go, just a, a little brush to get this in. I am going to look at doing some areas of masking fluid protection to keep it nice and white so that I can come in and refine the details and some areas I'm going to leave really loose and have some fun with. So I said you, you've got two options for this project. First of all you can go for traditional watercolours as you can see here. Um, with the watercolours you're going to need some brushes and I'm going to be using a big wash brush to play around with the colour in the background a spray bottle to manipulate the direction of your colour pigment. You're going to want a few different brush sizes, so you might want something a little bit bigger for that background and a little bit finer for the detail. And I'm going to be using some salt, just table salt there, and cling film that you can see has been used before, so recycling our cling film is always good. I am also looking uh, well, well, for me, I'm going to combine both watercolours and inks to give me the best of both worlds. So for my inks, I've got a set of Dela, and I've literally looked at my reference image and decided what colours that I have would best suit that reference image. You can see there my colour palette. Obviously you don't need the specific colours, you could work with yellow, red and blue and create orange by mixing your yellows and red and your greens by creating a mixture of yellows with blues. But I've got my green so I thought I would cheat. I've got a few pots of clean water which I'm going to need. I have some palettes, you can see that's my old ink palettes. It's got a bit, a bit messy but it shouldn't matter, it should still work. Um, and then once that's all dried, you might want a hair dry to speed that up depending on how patient you can be today, you're going to need some pens. Now you can be using fine liners like I've got here or you could be using more of a traditional cartridge pen like so. Okay, if I take the lid off. If you wanted, you could also use a dip pen, which I have got around somewhere. They're a little bit messy, the dip pens, but they're rather nice and you've got some fine nibs, which means you can get into the details. That's going to be the last layer, though, of the artwork. So, I guess the trick is to get down, first of all, the masking fluid stage to protect everything that I want white. To do this, I'm going to move all my bits and pieces off around so you can see the clutter, through the clutter hopefully, to the artwork and the reference image to give you a nice clear view of what is going on. I am going to take my masking fluid and give it a shake. Now masking fluid can go off so you might find that you want to just do a trial run on a separate piece of paper to check that it's working okay. This is pretty much a new bottle and it should be should be fine. There shouldn't be any issues over that. Um, my masking fluid is blue so that you can see where I'm going on the paper. You can get it in white 
but quite a few of my students like it in the blue. So to start off with, you want to take your brush and you want to dip it through some washing up liquid. Work that washing up liquid into the hair of the brush and it will create a barrier which stops the liquid latex from permanently adhering to the hair of the brush. Now my brush looks a little bit dirty so I'm just going to clean that off because I don't want to be creating any dirt on my picture. I need to keep everything quite clean. So I'm going to just run that through now after giving my brush a little bit of a clean. Maybe it was dust from the brushes sitting out in the room. That's better. That looks much better. Then I'm going to take my masking fluid and I've got my tray here. I've got a spare piece of tissue which I'd highly recommend always when you're working with this type of technique. My table is nice and flat so that means that when I pour my, wash, um, my masking fluid out and I only need a bit, like so. It shouldn't run anywhere. Putting the lid back on. I have knocked it over before and ended up with it all over my clothes and it's completely wrecked things. So be careful, don't get masking fluid on your nice clothing. Then you wanna take your brush and masking fluid out any features you wanna protect. Now for me, I'm gonna draw particular attention to this beautiful tulip in the foreground of my artwork. So I'm going to put on a nice thick layer of masking fluid all over it. So that means I can slap around, have some fun with my techniques and be quite playful. Not worry that it's going to wreck my flower in the foreground. This is going to be quite a loose, expressive and quirky artwork. We're going to cross over a few different techniques and be very playful with our approach. Be prepared for um, a little bit of splattering around, which I'll show you in a minute. And um, just go with it. That, that would be my advice to most people. See it as an experiment and, you know, what comes, basically comes. What may be, may be. So I've done that tulip here because this is in focus. That is in focus. I've gone a little bit over the edge there because I was slap dashing it on. But you know, it's not the greatest. I'll fix it later on. I am also going to come down here and I can see that I've got some really strong highlights. I'm going to just bring those in and protect those foreground leaves. Do make sure that it's a nice smooth coverage and you don't have any holes in it. And you can see in a few places mine's a tad thin, I will show you where so that you know what you're looking for and what you want to avoid. You could if you wanted to, you can see some highlights. If you wanted to put it in there, you could do. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna keep it in my flower. And once this is dried, uh, and it should dry within a few minutes, it should dry quite quickly, you can put on a little bit more if you're finding that your layer was a bit too thin and you're worried that some of the ink or the paint, because you use masking fluid for watercolors, will get through the layer. It's best to be um, apprehensive with these things. Make sure that your layer is a decent thickness. Okay. Now while that's drying, and I'm just making sure it's gonna dry quite well, I also fancy doing some other techniques which I thought would be fun on this. One of them that I quite like is when I splatter. So you can use a toothbrush or you can use a normal brush, as you can see I'm doing here. You can put some masking fluid on your brush and just splatter it around and create this dotting effect, which works out really well. Don't be afraid to go a bit over the top, you know, it can be fun. Depends on how much color you plan on having here ultimately for the end result. Do check that you are doing it quite evenly or it could 
on balance the overall appearance. Now with the masking fluid what you can do as well is once it dries if you've got some splats that were a bit messy that you don't like you can rub them off before applying the colour. You can see here I've just hit it and I've hit it down here. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to rub it off with my finger. Okay. Now, because I've got the washing up liquid on my brush before I then dip my brush into my masking fluid, if I take my water and I rub my brush in it, the masking fluid comes off on my brush. It's absolutely fine not damage. Now I will find that my water is really contaminated by masking fluid and washed up liquid. You cannot use this to clean any brushes or it will um, cross contaminate your paper and you'll get some horrible stain marks. I'm going to go and get some clean water while I'm doing that. This will dry out in the next five minutes and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start playing with some background colour. Right, so it's nearly dry, it's still a bit wet. Now, the areas where you've put quite a lot of the masking fluid will take longer than the other edge. You can see that it's wet. Can you see how that paper is raised off the surface that it's taped down to? So that's the expansion and contraction of the paper because of the wetness of the masking fluid. The masking fluid does need to be thoroughly dry or you are gonna have serious problems further down the line of the process. Um, we were talking a little while ago about removing things where it's gone wrong with masking fluid. For instance, here I splattered with the brush mark so that the masking fluid is now dry and I can feel that it's dry. I can run my finger over and it feels a little bit like tacky. If I take my finger and I apply a bit of pressure and I rub, you can see it just comes off. It rubs away from the surface of the paper. I also did it just up here. So I'm going to rub it off. You can use a rubber as well and rub anything that creates a degree of friction. Now after doing that, I can see up here I've got a little bit of a pencil um, smearing. I'm going to take my putty rubber and really make sure that I've got rid of that error. Because once I put the inks or the watercolours on top, I won't be able to get rid of those pencil marks. So you have to be quite confident of where you have them. Okay, I can see it's a little, a little bit wetter here in the middle, so I'm going to be very careful with this and try and let that bit dry, and I'm going to work around it. Now, with this, I gave you two options, like I said in the earlier stage. We've got watercolours or inks. I'm going to go for the inks in the background because, personally, they give a little bit more of a zappier colour, and I quite like the zappier colour. And I'll probably use the watercolours for the flowers. You can use the watercolours for the background using exactly the same technique that I'm using for the inks. Um, and you can use the inks just as I showed you. Well, I'm going to show you. Now, what you need to do is make sure that you've got a nice, clean working environment. So I'm going to move some bits over here. Give me a little bit of space. If you're going to work in the watercolours for the background, you need to be mixing up your colours and having your colours on the palette. It's ideal to have more than you actually require, so you've got quite a lot of coverage with the back of this paper. You'll be amazing, it is quite amazing how porous the surface of the paper is with the colour. Make sure you have a lot. With the inks, they're a little bit goes a long way, especially with this brand. This is a very high quality brand, which means you don't need much pigment. I am going to put out my pigment and ideally you should always put your pigment out onto your trays away from your artworks. You can see that I'm putting things on my artworks and it's just going to smear everything so it's not the greatest idea. Right, so you can be working in watercolour or you can be working in inks. I'm going to use inks for the background and watercolour for my main flower to show you the two different combinations. You can combine them or you can keep them separately and just use one. Now for the background I'm going to use inks, it gives a little bit more of a zappier colour. Um, it's up to you on how you want to approach it. 
If you want a little bit more of a softer, milder approach, more colours are probably preferred. If you're using watercolours and tubes, the colours again will be quite zappy and powerful, so be careful how much pigment you're putting out. I've looked at my reference image and I've chosen these image, um, these colours from my reference images. I've got my palette over here and I've got a spray bottle of water. Now you can do this by using a wash brush and having a tub of water and applying a wash of clean water then putting the inks in. I just fancy using a spray bottle. I'm going to use a little bit of salt which will work a little bit with the inks but not as much as if you did it with the watercolours but I have got some cling film and that will give me a really nice background effect for the inks or watercolours. Now shake your ink bottle before you use it and do it carefully and pour out a little bit on your palette. A little bit will go a long way. I'm going to probably do a little bit more because it's quite a lot of very soft orange in this picture. Um, I'm then going to use some orange. Right, I'm giving a decent spread across my palette. Uh, I go a little bit of red. You can see that red in the flowers. And then I've got a little bit of green coming down. So I've got two greens. I've got a dark and a light green. So I thought some of it's quite dark. I won't need much. My actual dipper isn't working very well. I've probably blocked my grain. I'll just use it to get a little bit out of my palette. I can pick up my brush. I've got my lighter, more zappy. This is actually very neon. That's a green, isn't it? If <laughs> ever there was one. So, at this stage, you've got two options. You can use a brush. You would dip your brush in water, working from the top. You would put brush marks all the way down, working horizontally. Before you do that, you do have to really make sure that your, your flower is thoroughly dry. If you want to use a different technique, which is my technique I'm using for this one, Take a clean spray bottle water and I'm going to spray, oh I've obviously got a little bit of red on there by accident, you can see that kicking off. And I'm spraying around there, I'm trying to be careful, I like the spray bottle because it's a little bit more sensitive. I'm then going to pick up a brush, I'm going to ease that red out while I can, while it's still light. And then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to work in the yellow section. Now immediately I have cross-contamination of green. For some bizarre reason, I must be picking that up off my palette. Because I've got a wet surface, it means that the ink is going to be, or the watercolour, naturally diluted in pigment, as you can see here, and it won't stain the paper. There's a degree that you can put it down, like I've just done there. Then you can take a tissue and you can blot off anywhere you put excess ink. Now if you put ink straight down onto dry paper, you will not have that luxury. So do try and think of working in a wet form if at all possible. I'm going to grab a little bit of orange, throw that in. I can take my water spray bottle and I can spray it, which will get a lovely bleed, or I can use a brush to work that in. I can pick up a little bit of red. Oh, that was a bit more red than I actually was anticipating. And I can work it in around here, just like so. Do make sure your um, paper is taped down because you can see here it's getting very wet And I'm making sure everything's staying fairly wet. If it gets too dry, you won't be able to move the colours around. Now, if you get too wet, don't get me wrong, that is a possibility, you will find that your paper does seriously start to cockle. Um, be careful. You're looking for Goldilocks, ultimately. See here? So 
right, I want to put a little bit of yellow in over here with the flowers. All right, if I use that tissue, I can blow it out. I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow and bring in my yellows like so. You can see that it's quite light up here, so I'm going to take that out using my tissue, my highlight. I get a little bit of kind of a greeny glow. You may find it's easy to work a small segment at a time, so think about where you're wetting. Now, if you're going to use the salt, you have to get it down while things are wet. So you can put a little bit of salt in and that will crystallise. If you want to use the cling film, again, it all needs to go down while everything is wet. So you can see here, I'm just taking my cling film, laying it over the top and working that in like so. And I can use my fingers to ruffle it up and that will create patterns in certain areas. Now once I've done that, I need to make sure that uh, my brushes are clean for the next stage and my palette is clean. If I wanted to and I feel like I, I want to be a little bit more fiddly and boost some of the colours, so you can see here with the red, while that's just down there, I could be sticking in a little bit more red to create a bit of a blade and I can do that with any colours I fancy do you have to be quite careful and do it while everything is wet right, I'm going to create that creamy tone like so that looks pretty good. That's going to be interesting when it dries. So let's let that dry. It's probably going to take half an hour. It's quite, quite a long time because it's had a lot of water put on this surface. Be patient. If you pull it off too quickly, you're going to end up with various problems. So be patient. Use a hairdryer. If you're going to use a hairdryer, ensure that you tape your cling film down because a hairdryer will just blow it off the paper and you will lose all the patination that you've just been trying to get. Right, I'm going to dry this out and I'll be back with you in a moment. Right, so you can see that generally this is dried. The paper is slightly bulging, so it's still a bit too wet to take any of the masking fluid off. But if you carefully pull back some of the cling film, and if it has dried to the level that it should do, you will see the various marks that you can generate from the cling film. See them here now by taking the cling film off it allow a little bit more air to it and that will come through the paper and allow the paper to dry you need to be very patient and very gentle with the paper it will break down otherwise at this stage so take your time you could give it a spritz of a hair dryer um, put it near somewhere warm and that will soon start to sort itself out but it does need to dry I love these marks look at that that's gorgeous um, my salt has crystallized in a few places but not hugely rock salt will give you a little bit better of a crystallization but i didn't have any on me so i'm gonna let this settle down and come back to it in a moment right i'm just gonna untape this picture to increase the flow of air underneath the paper to allow it to dry a little bit faster Because at this stage, the paper is still very wet and I don't want to start taking off any of the masking fluid or it will rip the picture. It would be very unwise. So I am just taping down the corners to keep it in place. But that will ultimately allow some airflow around the back of the paper and for the pictures to dry out because you can see this slight surface raising which is not great. Okay, 
Now I'm going to just gently work on the background, not the flower. Uh, because the masking fluid is only on small bits, I can use my finger to gently rub it off and reveal a slight dotting pattern. I need to be very careful in the bits that are, are wet. And I'm going to take off. So, if you start taking it off and it's pulling and ripping on your paper, you need to stop and allow the paper to dry further. masking fluid and you should be able to end up with something which is you can see the linear lines um, and you've got all this various patination from a slight um, crystallization from the sugar should have salt and also the pattern from the cling film do make sure that you have removed all your masking fluid because it can create a nasty texture which can wreck pictures later on. So take the time, take the time to really look and check that you've got everything off. Also brush away any of your salt that might be sitting on the top as well in a deposit. Now I'm going to do some watercolour detail and build this up. You can again use your inks if you wanted to and they'll give you a little bit more of a stronger colour. I'm going to go in with the watercolours. It's a gentler way of dealing with this and building up a very soft atmospheric environment. Then I'm going to work into it with watercolours. Now you can work in with watercolours or you can work in with inks. It's completely up to you. It works on exactly the same process that you're working light to dark, building up multiple layers. I am first of all going to do a little bit of information on the main petals and then I'll work on the background while that's drying and I can to and fro between the two. So this is quite a warm cadmium. I'm going to grab my palette and my water pot. I'm going to get some cadmium yellow. It's getting a little bit darker. Now I reckon I probably need a little bit of a darker hue cadmium. Yeah. So I'm gonna take my brush down a little bit of water it's on the edge because I've got my yellow that I want to run around so I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow and work quite gently into the edge of the petal and I'm going to grab some of my cadmium light here work that in like so right, I think that needs a little bit more of a stronger it. So I'm going to go and just throw in that red. Let's work this over. Try and work the petal as a whole <coughs> or you'll get a watermark. Also work fairly quickly. And bring that yellow in down that right hand side.
a little bit of crimson. Just make that a little bit stronger down the bottom. repeat on the other side. I need to bring in the yellow. Just along there. And then build up my reds. Just double down because they're going to be too hard as the white. You want a very soft highlight. You put a little bit of pigment down, blot it off, and create a softer tone. Okay, so that's all going to need to dry. While that's drying, I'm going to work over here and deal with these other flowers. And it's generally just painting everything in. but leaving areas so that it keeps a looseness that makes the picture interesting. Remember that you're working in watercolours or inks so you need to go light to dark. Keep your reference image very close. I work down here on this tulip. Right, so you can see that after the second layer of, um, well, second layer of medium, first layer of watercolour, you're getting this kind of result. I can see a little bit of dirt there, I'm just going to take that off. I've let a lot of it dry out and I'm just going to work up this flower now to make it quite prominent. I'll allow it to dry and then I'm going to start using my fine liner pen to go around and give it some detail. Obviously you don't have to work it up to as deep as this, you could have it quite mild um, and loose or, you know, and then do the pen and work on top. It's all personal preference. So, I'm going to start working up a little bit more colour to make this prominent. I'm going to try and keep it fairly loose. Just a real strong shift of red a lot of the time that I'm going to be working.
Right, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come in with my pen and fine tune all my details. Okay, so I've allowed everything to dry, as you can see. I'm just going to put that in here. Actually, I'm going to put that over there. Um, and I've got my reference picture. I've grabbed a pen, so I've got a 0 0.3 fine liner black. Now you can be working, like I said before, in any type of pen you want to work. You could even use a brush and go finely into this um, and build it up here. It's going to be a little bit like graphic design because it's the fine liner. It will give you a very different finish. But it's trying to combine the looseness and the patterns and the textures we've built up with a crisp linear drawing. So let's get on with it. Think about the type of lines you're generating. Do pay attention to any kinks and bumps that you might want. Again, the main flower in there, the nice easy part. Now you have to decide on all the background detail and how far up you want to work that. You might find that you want to do some cross hatching and draw quite a lot. Sometimes you might want to leave the background and have it quite loose. It's personal preference. There's no perfect answer. I'm going to draw in a little bit and show you what I mean. Right, so there you are. Very loose, fun, quirky, expressive combination. When I worked it with inks and watercolours, you could work all inks, you could work all watercolours. Then finished off with a fine liner pen. A loose, abstract, but tight enough for you to tell what it is artwork. It's going to be fun trying a few different alternatives to this. Please do experiment. And check out the beautiful work by Kat Smith from Pexels that's royalty free because she's got some other wonderful images that I know will inspire you. Have a lovely week. See you next time. Bye.